Collecticon Dallas Fort Worth. Here we go. I was so excited to get back to the States and experience a Collecticon in a new city that I hadn't been to before. So this is my second Collecticon that I've ever been to and it was great. Massive shout out to the team at Whatnot for hooking us up and I can't wait to show you what we got up to. This was my first deal of the con, which was absolutely huge. It's one I'm missing from my personal collection, believe it or not. So shout out to old school Pokemon for the deal on that. Also managed to pick up some of these cute little stickers. They were gifted to me, so thank you so much. And then we stumbled across this table. Now, they had a black labels galore. Literally, don't even need to say anything. Look at it. Black label after black label. It was crazy. It was starting to get really, really busy. And honestly, I feel like every show I'm now going to in the States, it's just getting bigger and better. There were so many cool things available. So many little custom bits of merch. And as you can see, the lines for all the meet and greets were starting to get crazy the pink power ranger line was all the way around the building i then spotted a charizard in the wild not sure if that's the real charizard cheeky glimpse of me on the screen and then i saw this stand and i thought this display just looked really really nice so you always come across a lots of things that you're not normally into or you might not see very often but then you know the deal guys had to pick up some wwe i don't actually have that box so i was really glad i managed to get hold of it they had lots of sports available here but i grabbed one sneaky box and i have opened it already maybe i'll show you what i pulled okay so started to make our way around the con and it's impossible to get round in any sort of organized order i spotted some vintage on this table which was pretty cool the platinum poster box in the back i really really like these guys had the hidden fates pin collection boxes and they actually had the sealed cases of them which was pretty cool some champions path boxes and then slabs galore i feel like everyone brings their a game but this for me was definitely a bit of a step up from orlando with some of the stuff that was available Pokemon Network, always with the fire slabs. This card keeps following me, I swear. I once owned it, and I keep seeing it at Collecticon. So in this cabinet here, there was some crazy, crazy cards. Coro Coro Mew, Gold Star Torchic. There were autos, and then in the corner, I spotted a trophy Kangas card. There were booster boxes galore as well. We have base set, Team Rocket, Fire Red Leaf Green, and even an autoed base box, which I think was really, really cool. And then this was wild there were vintage booster box cases jungle boxes fossil boxes gym boxes you name it it was available and lots of people had lots of loose packs as well which was pretty cool to see after checking out all the boxes and slabs the butler picked up this city championship medal which was really really cool just something to add to the collection i found so many cool funkos and so many autoed funkos as well that's not something or a world that i've really delved into i like my horror funkos power rangers shout out to nor I know you absolutely love Power Rangers. I thought this was really cool as well. So Autoed Funkos, I'm trying to sort of like learn a little bit more about the world of Funko, Shiny Charizard. Um, and I was desperate to pick up a particular Funko, which I'll tell you about in a bit. So Gold Stars, more vintage packs, more vintage boxes, you name it, everyone had it. Now these were really, really cool. There were some cool blisters in this display. The Dark Explorers packs were upside down in these single blisters, which I thought was pretty crazy, something cool an error everyone loves an error guys so upside down dark explorers blisters and then these cool triple blisters which had three neo packs discovery genesis and revelation we then got to open some packs with the guys at canto shark we did some evolving skies opening now believe it or not i didn't really open many packs at all over the weekend twinning on the sharpedo you know what it is guys it's not a pokey chloe stream or video without a twin and unfortunately evolving skies was rough it didn't want to give me any hits then i found the stand of dreams the horror section now i was after a billy funko so that is jigsaw on his little bicycle in funko version i couldn't find him all weekend but i tried this stand that figure right there the annabelle from the conjuring I really wanted it, but logistically, how was I gonna get it home? And also, I think the butler might have a heart attack if he wakes up and sees that in the corner of the room. So many cool items on here, so many little figurines, so many cool Funko Pops. We then found this stand and it was loose packs galore. You name it, they had it, even Skyridge. 
More vintage booster boxes as well, guys. If you ever want to be mind blown, head to a collector con because you will see things that you have never seen before and you will just, it's overwhelming. The amount that is available, it's crazy overwhelming. Expedition booster packs, Crystal Guardians booster packs, even more blisters, putting together a little bit of a blister collection. I've got some Next Destinies right here and Heart Gold Soul Silver base blisters as well, which is pretty cool. And then the butler did a little bit of a coin flip, which is becoming a bit of a tradition now. Thanks to Dean, who started the trend at the last collector con in order to basically work out who pays what for the deal, which is pretty cool. Then saw this really, really cool t-shirt on someone I know. And then found this EX Team Rocket Returns blister, along with some very, very nice cards and slabs at this stand as well. Even had some vintage in the background right there with some tops. There was modern, there were ancient muse, and I mean, every slab you could imagine, and a cute little Charmander plush. Thanks. <laughs> so we got, got a Neo Rev pack, open it up, first edition, hopefully heavy. Hopefully. Okay. I got more for you. <laughs> Going for the Gyarados. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Here we go. Starting things off with a Goldeen. Zubat. Slugma. Snubble. Quagshire. Remoraid. Unknown. Delibird was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Jump up hollow. Flappy <laughs> rocket title. Uh, <laughs> so after opening up the Neo pack with Nick, aka old school Pokemon, we also got to see a fossil booster pack get open. So this is also why I love coming to these events because everyone just goes crazy and starts ripping the craziest packs as well. So it's always really fun to do with this with friends, see this in person. Now in this pack, the goods were delivered because, drum roll please, insert drum roll, the Raichu was pulled. We love the Hollow Raichu. What a beautiful, beautiful card. Card. So that was also a successful pack opening. Found some really cool Funkos. Found a Snoop Dogg Funko. Guys, I didn't even know that existed. Now, out of all the stands that had Funkos, either I was really unlucky and just didn't see it, but Billy did just not want to repair. Unseen Forces Blister that the butler did a deal on, which was super cool. Now, there was an event after the first night of the con where you could uh, basically win some prizes. So we did that, and the butler and Pokemon Radar ended up winning these Yeezys and decided to sign them for one another and then exchange the shoes they each own a shoe each can't wear them obviously but it's kind of cute and then crep check on the butler the new crocs with the new pins managed to do a really really cool deal with master set games now it was a trade overall and it was for some tropical wind world 08 stamp cards um, as you can see there on the screen master set also had some really really hot singles and i mean we're talking ponchos we're talking vintage japanese vintage english massive shout out to master set great guy in the community found these really cool bucket hats kind of wish i picked one up for my brother because he likes a bucket hat but i'm pretty sure he probably wouldn't wear these i even managed to spot jason page doing air guitar with charizard live on stage you don't see that every day and then i came across this stand now when i say some of the craziest cards i have ever seen were sitting in these display cabinets you're about to see why i found not only a number one one trainer a first edition zard but the disco test print zard as well which is crazy there were so many wild error cards in here as well and some really cool 15th anniversary stamps there's the number one trainer how beautiful does that look it wasn't doing it justice on the camera but it was insane and then i got to hold this honestly like I said, I love coming to these cons because you get to see things and even handle things that honestly I'd never come across just sitting in my studio. So getting out there and meeting you guys, some of this is insane. So I had to capture this for you guys. These errors are so cool. It's where it's like double printed and you can see like Meowth and Gold back there. It looks insane. Found some Disney 100 boxes and I'm going to open one of those for you guys on the channel, which you'll see. Also spotted a wild Michael. I kind of wish I'd bought that mask. Then 
we headed back over to the guys at Canto Shark to see what they had out. And they had a first edition Zard in a PSA 9, which is crazy, along with some really, really nice vintage packs, both English and Japanese. And there were even some theme decks there as well. Another wild mask spotted up there, honestly. I, I need my own horror stand, guys. I need a horror store. Found some more Funkos. I was still on the hunt for Billy, but not successful. A lot of those were signed, which was cool. Thick Charizard, thick Pikachu. And then saw this Mew Funko. Now, I don't know why, but I feel like I haven't seen the Mew Funko before. I've seen the Mew too because I bought it for the butler, but I thought the Mew was cool. Found a signed Sting Funko as well. So many autoed Funkos, which I feel like I need to spend some time like researching and delving into because I definitely would like to get some of mine signed, which is really cool. And again, the Funko game was strong. I actually managed to pick up some WWE Funkos as well, which was pretty cool. Saw this guy. Would love to take him home again, realistically. Definitely not getting him on the plane. And where am I going to put him? This stand here is always like center stage of Collecticon. And some of the artwork is so cool. The Gallery Panda. I even spotted a Sky Ridge box in the wild. That is not something you see every day. And then the craziness started. There were some vintage pack openings. We had Swellpoke and That Lab Frank opening EX Dragon. Like I said, guys, people go wild at these cons and get togethers. Vintage rips, vintage degens. We love to see it. So the Polytoad as the butler's lucky, lucky charm started off with an EX Dragon pack. Now we've opened a few of these on the channel here and I haven't ever had crazy luck with EX Dragon, but like I said, it's not something we open every day. So Butler was up first and was he going to be lucky? Was he going to get a crazy hollow hit? He did get the reverse Absol, which is a really, really nice card, but unfortunately no luck on the hollow. So it was over to Swole, who was also going to open up an EX Dragon pack. Now the Butler's pack came from a blister and Swole's was a loose pack and Swole went straight into it. Super quick, wanted to see what was hiding in this pack. And then we got a little glimpse of something shiny and realized a hollow was about to be hit and it was the hollow flygon what a beauty right there and then this was kind of a warm-up for what was about to come we had pokemon radar opening up aquapolis we have got e-series right here again not holding back during these vintage openings and just being able to sit here and see these packs get opened absolutely unreal so no hollow hit in the aquapolis pack so we stepped it up and we moved on to neo genesis and this was the quickest hit ever ampharos no card trick second slot straight into it then opened up some neo rev as well now i absolutely love neo rev and if you've watched the channel look at those goodies in the background you'll know that we've opened up neo rev a couple of times here unlimited and first edition this was an unlimited pack but it delivered the hollow houndoom what a beautiful card we had a whole group of us here at the hotel watching this because the big big finale was about to take place a first edition base set pack now you may recall a few weeks ago or even a couple of months ago i opened up a first edition base set pack here on the channel and guys something weird happened it was deja vu because we hit a hollow poly wrap again <laughs> 